Most of the reforms that were carried out in the whole of the MENA region of Middle East and North Africa were based on programs and plans that were basically made up uh, by the international community. So they were very much influenced by the World Bank and other financial institutions. And this, uh, I, the idea behind it was that economic liberalization will ultimately lead to economic growth and that economic growth would also lead bit by bit to political openings, if not political liberalization. However, we have seen since the 90s, especially in the 2000s, and that's even before the wave of Arab revolts, uh, that there were very much negative consequences of these policies and that people actually got fed up with them and that there was a mounting anger and a growing number of collective mobilizations and social protests that were going against these, uh, this type of reform that uh, was being implemented. And then with the wave of Arab uprisings and revolts and revolutions in the early 2010, 11, 12, uh, I think a lot of people and I also think the populations of the region really believed that it was time for alternatives, for other types of reforms to be implemented. And what we see today is that basically we take the same uh, type of ideas than 10 years, 20 and 30 years ago and that we're actually facing the same challenges as 10 years or 20 years ago alas. But when you see in 2008 there is a worldwide financial crisis that a lot of countries starting with the US and then coming to Europe and certainly certain southern European countries have faced major economic uh, crisis and challenges. Um, the European Union basically went back to the most um, uh, neoliberal type of answers to that crisis. So it was all about um, uh, monetary discipline, it was all about cutting the budgets for all kinds of uh, social issues, etc, etc. Now with this mindset, obviously when the Arab revolts happened, it's very difficult then for Europe to implement other types of developmental economic ideas in, uh, in, in its surroundings. So basically what Europe wants is that what Europe did and what worked more or less for European countries, um, they thought that it should work also for the Arab countries. But alas, we see that it's not really working because these countries have economies that are much uh, weaker than the European countries and are much less integrated, so they are not strong enough to compete and to become players on the same leveling uh, field. The social protest is so widespread that the governments over there uh, have to do something with them. So they have to react, they have to uh, make up new policies and that puts these governments in North Africa between two fires. On the one side they don't want instability in the country, they would like to have less social protests and difficulties. On the other hand they also don't want to lose the, the help and especially the financial help of the international community and financial institutions. So they try to balance and mitigate these different demands, the demands coming from their own society and the demands coming from the international community. And it's a very difficult position for these governments to hold. And we see that nearly every year, for example, when budgets have to make up the yearly budgets, um, that it's a, a very, very difficult exercise for them to find the right balance between what the people want and what the international community wants. And that's uh, a challenge, a major challenge challenge for the future. Well, Tunisia and Morocco have, um, even though Tunisia went through a revolution, um, and I know that even in Tunisia people are putting a question mark behind that uh, term, but still, you know, a lot of things have changed politically in Tunisia. It's uncomparable to a lot of other countries in the region. While Morocco, while it also witnessed social protest and, and collective mobilizations, like with the 20 February movement, there in Morocco the king was able to very quickly co-opt the movement and to tone things down.
Nevertheless, what the two governments now are facing are the same economic challenges. The context is different in the sense that the Moroccan government is still using more, let's say, classic authoritarian reflexes to deal with the demands of the people. While in Tunisia, because of the new constitution, the new political era, it's much more difficult. They try sometimes. There is an authoritarian reflex coming back in, but they have less leverage than in Morocco to, um, to use repressive means. So we see that in Tunisia the collective mobilizations have much more opportunities to develop, to organize themselves and to continue um, in, in furthering their agenda and making claims. And these claims are getting stronger and louder. Mm -hmm.